and they they found an extraordinary amount of HIV and hepatitis C and and uh, all these conditions in this asymptomatic population. An extraordinary amount, he says. Well, let's check him on that. Let's go to the results table of this very paper that he's talking about and see that, oh, look at that. They found five people with HIV DNA in their blood and one person with hepatitis C virus in their blood. See what I mean about him lying? Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a molecular and structural biologist, and I'm back to debunk some more COVID-19 misinformation. And this week, I'm going to be debunking Dr. Zach Bush. Dr. Zach Bush is well known in the anti-vaccine community, and of course, he's had thoughts on COVID-19. So in this video, I'm going to be debunking an interview that he had with prominent anti-vaxxer Del Bigtree. Now, this interview is a painful hour and 20 minutes long, and although I watched the whole thing, I'm only going to be addressing the first about 20 minutes in this video, because really that's all you need to see in order to understand that Zach Bush understands nothing about disease. Which is sad because although he's a real doctor, he denies the very basics of medicine and denies germ theory, the idea that, you know, microbes cause disease, in substitution for what he calls terrain theory. It's a whole lot of nonsense, so let's get into it. The virus is going to move through the population, and just like every other coronavirus that we've seen that's that's resulted in, in widespread death, it's gone within two years. Uh, the first one was SARS, and it, no vaccine, no anything. We just developed herd immunity or adjustment, or the, the actual biologic pool for the production of that virus disappeared. And so that was gone. 2002, it happened. By 2003, it was gone. Uh, MERS happens 2012. By 2013, it's gone. No vaccines. Well, there are really big differences between SARS, MERS, and COVID-19. Just because they're all coronaviruses doesn't mean they're going to behave the same way. For example, the original SARS was a coronavirus that had a really tough time spreading from person to person. The person who caught it and got sick normally was not able to spread the virus before they actually developed symptoms. And it was pretty nasty, so these people would end up in the hospital or bedridden before they had a chance to run around and spread the virus to other people. And even if they had the chance to do that, again, the virus was not very efficient at spreading from person to person. Same thing with MERS. It really wasn't good at spreading from person to person, which is lucky for us because these diseases had a really high death rate. Now with COVID-19, it actually has the potential to spread before the person ever experiences any symptoms or even when the person never experiences any symptoms. It can still easily spread from person to person. It's very infectious, so it can cause a high number of cases so that even with a really low death rate, it kills a lot of people, as we have already seen. So the reason that SARS and MERS went away without a vaccine is because they could not spread efficiently and we were able to contain them before it became a worldwide pandemic. This has everything to do with the biology of the viruses and nothing to do with the fact that we didn't have a vaccine for it. But if you look back to like 1976 when we saw this huge uptick in viral syndromes, uh, around 1976 is when we started to see species jumping viruses that were really starting to do weird things uh, genomically. As a scientist, I hear Dr. Zach Bush say this, and it immediately tells me that he completely misunderstands the biology of what he's talking about, or he's just lying. This roadmap that comes up on the screen is just depicting some genetic mixing that influenza viruses undergo, which we refer to as antigenic shift. This is something that we've known about for a really long time, but have only ever been able to track thanks to genetic sequencing. And you guessed it, DNA sequencing didn't really take off until the 70s. So Dr. Zach Bush is using little hints of truth and then completely twisting them in order to get his audience to believe his outlandish lies. And so when somebody comes along and says there's a new virus, my first thought is, how the hell do you think that's new? Like, what is the data that you're basing that on? Have you screened the genomics of, of the viruses on the planet before? And the answer is absolutely you can. Yeah, we are looking at the genetic sequence of the virus in order to determine whether or not it is a new virus. I think Dr. Zach Bush is being intentionally dishonest here. By calling this virus new, we're not saying that it never existed in nature before. We're saying that it is new to us. It is a coronavirus that is different from all known sequenced coronaviruses, and it is now causing a lot of disease in us after it jumped from an animal to a human. 
That's what happened. This virus is new to us. It is causing disease that is completely new to us. But I think Dr. Zach Bush knows this, and he is intentionally misleading his audience in order to come off as credible and believable. When we see uh, a microbe become endemic in an area, and polio is a great example of this, um, HIV is a great example of this now, where we have endemic areas where, where the virus is, is simply in the environment at such a, a level uh, that it's very likely that we're going to see manifestations of, you know, adaptation of the humans in that environment are, are going to absorb that microbe. Okay, this is where we start to get into some of the really harmful things that Dr. Zach Bush says. Basically, he's saying that if you allow a disease to spread throughout a population, then the population will adapt and incorporate that disease into their normal biology. This is so wrong and just completely disregards all of the suffering that infectious disease causes. He specifically brings up polio as an example of this. Now, I've gone through this information before on my channel, but I'll say it again. Endemic polio is not good. In fact, in the early 90s in India, when polio was hyper-endemic, it was extremely common in the population there were so many polio infections that upwards of 500 to 1,000 children were getting paralyzed daily. 500 to 1,000 kids paralyzed daily. Yeah, keep in mind that Dr. Zach Bush thinks that that is a good example of his idea that microbes that cause disease are good because they contribute to our microbiome's genetic diversity. That's embarrassing. There's a, a really interesting study that screened 8,000 healthy people with no history of infectious disease, had screened negative through blood banks and stuff like that, and they did genomic analysis for a couple hundred viruses that are known, and they found uh, 42 viruses in the bloodstream uh, of these, these patients that were totally healthy and asymptomatic with no history and had screened negative by antibody testing and the like for things like HIV and things like that. And they, they found an extraordinary amount of HIV and hepatitis C and, and uh, all these conditions in this asymptomatic population. An extraordinary amount, he says. Well, let's check him on that. Let's go to the results table of this very paper that he's talking about and see that, oh, look at that. They found five people with HIV DNA in their blood and one person with hepatitis C virus in their blood. See what I mean about him lying? Now another point that he makes here is that these individuals in this study were screened for diseases before having their blood taken, but that's also a lie. The authors simply state that all of the people that they took blood from were ascertained to be infection free. Now the paper does not describe how they checked this, they probably just asked them because they don't describe any methods of actually testing these patients for infectious diseases beforehand. And if they went through the trouble of testing over 8,000 patients for over 40 viruses by antibody testing, I'm sure they would include that in their methods to show everybody that they did all that work, but they don't. So I think they just asked the people if they have viral infections known to them. And honestly, finding five people in a population of over 8,000 people who have HIV DNA in their blood is not super surprising. We know that HIV takes time in order to manifest into AIDS, so it's entirely possible that these five individuals actually have HIV infections. To use this study to say that viral infections are common, widespread, and don't actually cause disease is just complete dishonesty. And tuberculosis is a phenomenal example of a condition that didn't spring for forth until we created the Industrial Revolution. And suddenly in London and New York, we have, you know, endemic problems of tuberculosis happening in the cities because we were so divorced from that ecology of balance, that ecology of harmony there. Well, tuberculosis is mostly a problem in countries that don't have good access to treatments or prevention methods. So... I'm not sure what he's talking about here. Throughout this whole interview, Dr. Zach Bush keeps talking about this magical equilibrium, this magical homeostasis of the human ecosystem where there's no disease possible. But he never actually talks about what that is. What does that look like? 
Show me a population of people who have reached this equilibrium and are completely immune to disease. There are no examples of that. Humans can't even touch the speed of biodiversity, the bio biodiversification of the virus. We, they are so fast in replication and they are so fast to shift their genomics. We can't keep up with that. There's no laboratory in the world that can do it as fast as nature does it. Nature is an adaptive, beautiful machine. What Dr. Zach Bush doesn't recognize here is that the tools that we use to fight these infections are taking advantage of nature itself. For example, the antibiotics that we use to fight tuberculosis, those antibiotics are derived from nature. We found them in nature and now we use them to treat infections. Similar to vaccines, which just harness the power of natural immune systems. Those vaccines just teach the immune systems to use their natural abilities to fight specific infections. So yeah, we absolutely can keep up with nature, but we won't do that by listening to fake experts like Dr. Zach Bush. Well, even though that was only the first 20 minutes of this interview, I can assure you that he does not get any better throughout the rest of the interview. Again, all you need to know about him is that his idea of equilibrium with disease is 500 to 1,000 paralyzed children every day. So for now, that is Zach Bush, one of the big names in the anti-vaccine community, debunked. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. I've been getting requests to cover Zach Bush for a while now, and man, he is just bad. As always, all of the links to all of the scientific information that I reference in this video are linked in the description below so that you can check them out for yourself. Because remember, I'm not an authority on these topics. I'm just letting you know what the data say. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe so you can catch me next week where I'll begin debunking the disinformation dozen. See you then.